Let's program and be creative. It's time for MIT App Inventor. In this video, we're gonna continue our journey building our basic dice game. This is for AP Computer Science Principles, Big Idea 3, Algorithms and Programming. In the previous video, we covered 3.1, which was variables. We created this basic dice game, and we were focusing on just variables, which is, you can see down here, if I press roll them, these numbers are updating, and we did that using some simple variables, die one, die two, and current roll. This big ideas topic is 3.2 data abstraction. You can see here, represent a list or string using a variable. For data abstraction, develop data abstraction using lists to store multiple elements, explain how the use of the data abstraction manages complexity in the program. And again, make sure that you read through this information, this is what will be on the AP Computer Science Principles exam at the end of the year. But for our purposes, we're building from 3.1 to 3.7 this basic dice game and covering these topics. So for data abstraction, they want us to use a list in the form of, of a variable. We will do that. So here on our class page, you can see data abstraction, dice images, we need some dice images and some sounds that I provided you. Now, I've given you all of these images and you're again, you're just going to download them. I have the images already and I have the sounds, you can see them here. And you can see all these sounds. So what we're gonna do, they want us to make a variable with a list. We have all of these different sound effects. We're gonna make a list with these sound effects. And then we're gonna randomly play one of those sound effects anytime you roll the dice. So in this part of our game, we're gonna add images of the dice, and when we press roll them, it'll update the images, and it's also gonna play some of these random sound effects using the list. Here's some of the sound effects that I got. I took um, from Rush Hour 2, Chris Tucker is in a casino and he's rolling dice and he's winning a lot of money. Um, so I just took some sound clips from that, and I also have some shaking dice sounds. So here are the shaking dice sounds. Oh, I got snake eyes. Yeehaw, I got snake eyes. So you can see that's another sound. Here's some of the Chris Tucker sounds. Catch me out. Come on, let's play. Woo, I'm gonna get some of this money. And again, you feel- Everything stays on the table. Don't nobody touch that table, you understand? So you can see I have a bunch of different ones. I want some of this money, get me in this game, come on. So we're gonna play some of these random sounds when you roll your dice and we're just gonna make it a little bit better using data extraction. All right, so again, first make sure you download the stuff. Let's go ahead and get started. So over here, first thing we need to do is update our design. If we're gonna have sound, we need, we don't have a sound effect. We don't have a player, we don't have anything down here. So we're gonna come over to media, drag in a sound. And let's rename it SND Shake Dice. So anytime we shake the dice, we're gonna play the sound. Now we're not gonna set the sound right here. Um, we're gonna shake it, set it actually when we push on this, but we do need to upload all of those sound, pick, sound effects. So you can see I have all the sound effects right here for me. Let's go ahead and upload all these sounds. So I'm gonna come down here. You can, you can choose whatever sounds you want. I'm gonna upload a bunch of them. So go ahead and upload your sounds. All right, so I've uploaded all of these random sounds. Let's actually go ahead and code this. We're also gonna add images in, but we'll do that after we get the sounds working. So again, for data abstraction, they want us to make another variable. 
and they want us to make a list in that variable. So I'm gonna come over here, pull in this. We've done this before actually. So I'm gonna do sound effects, roll dice. I wanna make a list, I'm gonna go to list, pull in a list. How many sounds did I do? I did one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So I did seven sound effects. This only has two. Remember in App Inventor, if you see this little settings icon, you can actually update the block. So it has two items, which is two items here. I need seven. I'm gonna fill these in with text boxes. Now, here's the thing. These have to exactly match. So, if I click download the computer, I'm gonna take this first part because I already have it on that page. It's trying to add a one to it, but just take the name of the file. So I'm gonna copy that. And the ending part is .mp3. So I'm gonna put this in here, .mp3. Make sure you don't have a space there. Do the same thing. I'm gonna download this file. I just wanna get all the way to the end of that name. Push cancel and put that in there. This is, make sure you pay attention to the ending. Sound effect, this is a wave file, .wav. So we'll do this for the rest of these as well. Sound, let's play. Copy that. This is a .mp3, sound effect, hot table. I could have copied these from my local computer, but just showing you, you wanna make sure that you have the exact same name. So there, we have a variable that is a list of the sound effects that we're gonna play when we play this. So we have that, but that's just a variable. We need to make sure, what else do we need? We, have, we need to pick one of those randomly, put it in this sound effect, and then play it. And to put it in this sound effect here, you can see it has a source. Remember this is a property. So the properties are the green blocks. We can code that and that's what we're gonna do. So here, when we roll the dice, let's just update our thing. Five, I'm gonna say pick random roll dice sound effect and put into source and six. Play the random roll dice sound effect. All right. So first thing, I'm gonna go down to sound effect shake. Here is our source. Again, you can get it. That's a light green. That means if you wanna get what it currently is, this is the dark green, which means you'll want to set it and you can set it at the very beginning. I wanna set my sound effect. Now, I want it to be a random, a random guy from this list. So I can actually go to list over here and it has a bunch of different things that you can do with list. Well, one of them is right here and it says pick a random item from a list. And don't worry, we'll use all of these throughout as we build more games and apps to help you prepare for the create performance task exam. So for right now, we're just gonna use pick random item from the list. And we're gonna pull that. The list we want is our variable name, which is this. I'm gonna mouse over it. I wanna get it, you can see. I'm gonna put that in there. Now, if I press roll them, it's inside of here. What will happen? What do you think will happen? If I press roll them, everything before is working, but I don't hear any sound. Well, look at what we did. 
all we did was pick a random sound and we put it in the source. We didn't actually play it. So let's go to sound effect, shake dice, and we simply want to play it, which was step six. So now, if we click on this, it should pick a random sound and then play it. Let's see if it works. So again, remember I'm using my emulator, so it's, the sound is gonna be distorted, but if you try it on your phone or tablet, it will play, um, it'll play regular. So you can see it's picking randomly. It's picking the same ones over and over again. This one is for so you can see that is working. So there is data abstraction. We're actually storing a list inside of a variable and we're randomly picking from it. Well, let's also update this. I don't like these two images. We're actually gonna put these instead, I'm actually gonna show pictures of dice. So um, let's add in some images into our here. And for these guys, let's just hide them. We don't really need those. And for this, I'm gonna call this IMG die one. And for now, let's just make it one of these pictures. So I'm going to make it a one, fine, that's great. And way too big, right? So let's say something like 150 pixels. And I'm gonna say 150, I might have to make it smaller than that. Oh, that looks pretty good. So got that one. Now this is going to be IMG die two. And I want to update. Let's, let's say I'll put in a six. Great. And again, I think we made it 150 by 150. And there we go. So we have these two images now. Um, we need to update the pictures based on the number. Now we only have two images uploaded. Go ahead and upload the other images. So I need to upload two. Three. Four. And that's all of them. So we're gonna use programming to update the pictures from the random numbers that were generated. So I want to, actually I'm gonna show these, but I'm gonna, can't really see anything. So I'm gonna, let me do a fill parent for this first. Whoa. This is shown and this is shown. Let's do a fill parent on this. All right. So I'm going to leave it for right now um, so you can kind of see it. Um, these numbers that are going to generate, I want to use that number with the picture to update these picture images. So let me just, when I click on this, right, you can see that turned to one and that turned to six. I want to use that to make this a one and this a six. When I click this again, that turned to six and this turned to three. Remember, these are our variables. I wanna update these pictures. How are we gonna do that? Well, image, this is picture, it is a property. We can update that property and we can simply take this number and point it to the correct picture. Now, if you look at how I named these images, they're all the same, dice dash one, dice dash six. So we can actually use six or three to pick the correct image and display it. And that's what exactly what we're gonna do. 
So to update the pictures, I think it's getting a little bit long now, but we're just gonna come to image pictures right here. I wanna set it, right? I'm gonna get the second one as well. Now you have to look at how the, I named it. It has something in front of a number and then it has dot PNG. So I'm gonna need a join statement. So I'm gonna go to text, do join, text, do join. I'm gonna need three parts, something in the front, something in the back, and a number in the middle. Something in the front. Get rid of that, get rid of that. Something in the back and a number in the middle to update the pictures correctly. So again, you can see all of these have dice, lowercase dash. So the thing that goes in the front is dice dash. And that's gonna be for both pictures. Dice dash. Now, it has a number. That number is these numbers. Well, what are these numbers? These numbers are our variables, which was 3.1, variable, die one and die two. We're picking a random number. So that middle number is actually our variables. I'm gonna come back up here. I'm gonna grab die one. I'm gonna grab die two. And pull that in there. So, when I kick roll die, it's gonna randomly generate a number. This becomes dice dash, whatever number that is. The last part is down here, dot PNG, dot PNG. And dot PNG. So now this is how I can use the variable to select the correct image. Let's show you that it works. So now what you should see is die one's gonna show you the number and this one should be actually the updated image. And die two is gonna show you the number on this side and this one should be the actual updated image. Let's see if it works. Look and see, die one is two, that's two. Die two is three, that's three. You can see die one is four, one, two, three, four. Die two is two, one, two. Five and five, two and six, one, one, two, three, four. So you can see this is working. So now let's go ahead and hide our, these guys, we don't need these anymore. We actually could delete them, but I'm just going to simply hide them. And that, let's fix our images. We did 150 by 150. So let's make it that again. Instead of field parent, let's make it 150. And so this, let's make this 150 as well. So there we go. This unit was on 3.2 data abstraction. We built a list and extracted the different sound effects inside of that variable. We also extracted out the variables and used them to select the images. So here is what we have. And you can see the, the current role still works and that is also coming from the variable. We're done with this unit again. From 3.1 to 3.7, we're going to slowly but surely build out this game and map it to the AP Computer Science Principles Big Idea 3, Algorithms and Programming. The next unit will be 3.3 Mathematical Functions.